Go to school. Get good grades. Further your education so you can get a great job. Um, and then what? Who came up with this? Is there a review board somewhere? Can I speak to the manager? I mean, why is the current education system not designed to teach me more about how to be, how to realize my purpose, and how to align to my purpose? We will be talking to local entrepreneurs about their journey and how they found a way to align with their purpose. I'm Nomza Mamadoto. Welcome to Slow Up Shendis. In this episode, we are talking to Mbumele Lomdinzo of Book Iboni Bicycle Tours, based in Vilagazo Street, Soweto. Mbumi, as he's fondly known, is a Soweto born cyclist who managed to align his passion and purpose and founded Book Iboni Bicycle Tours which positively impacts the community by encouraging active citizenship through cycling. So, Mbumi, yeah. I'm going to assume that you like books. <laughs> <laughs> A very bad assumption. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. continuing with my assumption, Yeah. what was the first book you read that made you fall in love with reading? books uh i'd have to say Ilanduge, animal farm uh, from school oh, yes, <laughs> yes. but obviously after school reading on my own um what's his name there's a guy called brian i just can't remember his last name um yeah and i used to love that book but uh brian tracy okay uh he has a book called something frog uh, that's one of the books that I read on my own. It was about motivational uh, things, and those are the only books I can read. By the way, I can't read Ilandoga, uh, a novel. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, so I, I prefer anything with chapters that's in a different chapter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So first chapter we're talking about bicycles. The next chapter we're talking about books. Like I can get to choose which chapter I start with. And not necessarily start from the from the front or the beginning. Yeah. You remind so. me of a girl I went to school with. <laughs> she used to read the book from back to front. Yeah, I, I think like, I'll do that. <laughs> you already know what happens. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Would you say you are more into self-help books then? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm more into motivational, you know, self-development. Um, yeah. That, that sort of books. Um, I understand books. I understand bicycles. How did you put the two together, and then came about book Kiboni? How I put that together is so during during Lantuga, during Ifizma's fall. Ne? Yes. Um, I had just started the, the bicycle tour, um, and then Ifizma's fall was a huge movement, and I saw what was happening. Mm. Um, I was not a student at the time. I think I had This was finished. like four years ago. Yeah, this is four years ago, 2016, I think. Um, so I'm not the same school as school and studied marketing at uh, some college. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was not a student, but obviously the movement was so big that it affected me as well. Yes. Because I remember reading an article of but he, uh, the youth of South Africa in general is using Ephesians 4 uh, to disrupt, to be lazy, uh, to not go right, okay. exams and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, how can I use the same movement, God, to, to, to bring positive impact into our community, you know? Uh, also, just to prove, but not all the youth is actually that lazy. You know what I mean? And not all the youth is is doing all these, these, these crazy things um, and that's when I was like you know what let me find a way to marry books and cycling together um, and then I was like look uh, big bicycle tours are way too pricey for us locals you know what I mean so I was like look let me offer a discount give people like 5% discount if they donate a book and then I can always take that book and donate it to community libraries uh, because also 
not only are we asking for the for education to be free, mm-hmm. but we also don't have access to English in, in general. You know what I mean? You go to a library, um, you find one section of the shelves empty. And it's not like those books are taken by the community or people. It's like it's just empty because I've done one. You know, so I thought I'll be the hero and fill up those shelves. Nice. <laughs> uh, because also personally, I had books at Ekaia collecting dust. Um, from all the reading so I was like if it's uh, if I have books chances are other people have books right so that's a collecting task and what a cool way to you know pass the book on um, and I always believed that well, I wanted to read uh, a lot of books there's certain books that change your life yes. right so I thought look if you can give that book to someone else then chances are it can change their lives as well you know what I mean and and I mean I believe in Ubuntu and for me giving something or sharing something with someone that's what we're doing. you know it doesn't have to be complicated yeah. Yeah. so that's how that came about <laughs> <laughs> yeah so how does the bicycle <coughs> work so with the bicycle tours um, first we are listed on international platforms where obviously people from outside South Africa can see us and book um, and I think we're doing fairly good on those international platforms because we do, we do give good service um, I think that's one thing that we can pride ourselves with to say you know um, we give people their money's worth you don't want to pay for a tour and feel like Aish! yeah but you know <coughs> excuse me so First and foremost, we are listed on the international platforms, so that's how tourists from outside of South Africa see us. Uh, we're not um, listed with any government, anything, okay. right? Uh, because that has its own politics. And me personally, I'm a person with, you know, very little passion for things that, you know, a decision can be made, you know, and move on, you know. <coughs> so, so yeah, so we get people from outside of South Africa booking us through Airbnb, TripAdvisor, um, uh, Bookings.com, I think, as well, and the other smaller international platforms. Um, and then when they come this side, we meet in Flower Street, and then we take them around a, in a township. Okay. Right, so our tours usually have a historical parts because our history is what makes us. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the history that we have, right? So we take them on the historical tour stops at heritage sites, um, and then we also get some beer tasting as well at the local brewing company um, where they produce uh, the local beer. Um, also, there's a big history around that as well, so it's always nice to share. Um, and then also, our one of our favorite stops also is at Mamu Winnie Mandela's house. Um, I think stories that we hear there, um, they're not on like social media or any book really. You know? um, so it's always it's always nice to 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 share those kind of stories with people. Um, and then it's always interesting when we have white South Africans on the tour uh, because obviously they have their own version of how our history went yes. and we have um, stories from our grandmothers of what went down right so so that's always interesting um we create a dialogue yeah it, it, at some point it does it's just that as people um we're different so other people they they want to make their point uh, very visible to a point where you know your point shines so bright that yeah. you don't see anyone else's points right so, I mean, the interesting person that we've had on the tour was a white South African who was a police during 1976. Um, and he has his own reasons of why he was part of the police force during that time. And He was actually here. Yeah, because so at the beginning of the tour he said, oh, I've been to Soweto, but under different oh. conditions. I guess the stories that we're telling about 1976, he obviously don't necessarily believe in the stories that we're telling mm-hmm. so he wanted to tell his side of the, of yeah. the story which I mean it's fair enough um, share what you know it's always good to hear uh, both sides of the story anyway uh, but he was you know aggressive in his uh, storytelling or his approach on making his point but besides that it's always people that are willing to learn 
um, and willing to share what they know because I always make it clear at the beginning of the tour that look if you have you know different points especially if you're South African if you've heard of the history that we'll be sharing with you guys in a different way or you know it differently feel free to, to debate us let us know what you know uh, let us learn from each other especially South Africans um, also with international people because they come to South Africa already knowing about go to where don't go to Soweto but they were like ha why are you saying I mustn't go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to go. You know, so they're already coming with that mentality of, uh, hey, so where to is very dangerous, it's this and this and that. And then when they get here, they just see very warm, welcoming people. So it then changes and then they tell us on what other people have told them, okay. you know, what to expect and stuff like that. So uh, for us, it's part of the job. Um, I think I'm also fortunate to be working with, you know, people like Umpolisi and Umklanta who are also... Um, very much welcoming so they also yeah yeah, and they also understand people you know from all different walks of life because we also came from all sorts of uh different walks of life so i think it makes it makes the whole experience uh easier you know um because if one come to in your team understands that not everyone is the same you know and i think they're very good also at reading about so when we have tours and you come wearing a stiletto on a bicycle tour, <laughs> then we can already tell on where you are as a person. You know, then we try and accommodate you and your high heels. Um, You'll be surprised. Yeah, I mean, look, there's people that I'm have never, saying. there's people that have never cycled, but they book a bicycle tour. And then when they get here, we need to give them a crash course on how to cycle so that we can get our job done. 10 minutes before you have to go. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's always interesting because sometimes if someone really can't cycle, they're really struggling, then we'll go for a walking tour. Okay. The police will take the ones that are going with the bike, I'll take the walking or vice versa. You know what I mean? Find a way. Yeah, That's always find a way. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. we can let, because uh, <laughs> I don't do refunds. <laughs> so when you are here already, there is no way I'm giving you your money back because I'm also here giving you my time and vice versa. You know what I mean? So, so we need to find a way. Good policy. Yeah. <laughs> um, as people will learn, even from books. So. Which book would you say that actually gave you that those lessons to actually push you to where you are today? Oh man, I, I read a lot of, uh, like I said, self-motivational books, uh, a lot of books from entrepreneurs as well. So I think there's a book by Richard Branson, Screw It, Let's Do It, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that book was like, you know, for me, was that book that was like, you know what? screw the fact that people don't actually believe in bicycles especially in South Africa bicycles are a toy you know what I mean so for me I was like you know what I see what a bicycle can do you know um, to put it as raw as it is to charge room to 600 to put a quality bicycle in, you know what I mean for two hours max yeah. right so I was like so if I can charge one person in 600 to put a bicycle if I charge 20 people to ride a bike for three hours i mean that's six times 20 that's a lot of money for me you know what i mean and if i do that on a daily basis then i mean i'm sure i'm doing better than a call center person right so i was like look uh screw it let's do it so for me i think i think that book by richard branson was also a huge uh part of 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 why i do what i do okay yeah because i i really like that that whole mantra of like screw it you know like or yes. you need this, you need that. Hey, you you need yeah, you know what I mean? Team. Like, just do it and see what happens. And I did it, and you know, it, it, it had some positive impact in the, in the township. And here we are today. Cool. On that note, can you tell me how was Boki Boni received? Um, I think a lot of people love supporting anything that has a positive impact in the townships right um, and my whole thing has always been about for you to sell anything a look sheen you need to make it look cool right okay. so in tourism i mean unfortunately or fortunately whichever way you look at it you need to have like a white uh, tourist on a bike for you to sell 
so that people can be like, oh, white people are on the Stay five. Too. You know what I mean? <laughs> the trend, you know what I mean? So for me, that was never the focus. Yes. For me, it was whoever's on a bike. I just need to make them look cool. So that's why all my bikes are matching. All my helmets match. You know what I mean? Which is I something. I that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. All my bikes, when I, when I have, like, tours, yes. all my bikes are, like, black and white. All our helmets are blue and white. Uh, so everyone feels equal. And also it gives it gives that sort of a uniform of yeah. some sort, you know what I mean? So for me, the whole thing was to make it look cool. You know, if I can make anything look cool and... You're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You said you studied marketing. Yeah. And then um, Bookie Boni is more uh, like a tourist type of venture. Yeah. So how did you move from marketing to this space? Um, so after studying marketing uh, at that college, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I then decided to have a, a marketing company that deals with events, okay. right? Um, personally, I'm a huge football fan. Uh, my mother and father are football fanatics. Okay. So I think they met somewhere around in. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Maybe one was playing and the other, the other one was like, you, that guy, you know what I mean? But, and then that's all obviously passed on to me. I love football with all my heart. So with my marketing company doing events, what I used to do is I used to marry street soccer um, and fashion okay. street fashion and create this subculture of you know um, urban so what I did is I used that marketing company to host these five a side events but the teams were brands so okay. you have for example escort versus Dunkey Sunny clothing brand you know what I mean mm -hmm. and with, so with marketing that's that's how I always you know visioned uh, marketing in the townships you know to give also the customer people that support you to come and represent the brand on the day yes. and play for escort um, or Danke Sani, right um, so that's how I used to do my marketing things I mean that was, that was a big deal we even had the South African Football Federation come through uh, you know to the events but for me it was it was a thing of after the whole soccer match and the brand that won and obviously it's crown street king um i felt like it was cool but there was no there was nothing impacting the community in a positive way because at the end of every event what we do i mean just have a beer chill and really have nothing conversations you know what i mean for the brands it was pretty cool because you know brand gets more exposure mm. and then whoever was sponsoring that that event for me you know will give them also whatever that they give them yes. but it didn't have the impact that matters you okay. know what i mean at the end of the day it's it's it's, it's you know education is key whether yes. we like it or not you know um so there was no education in that you know i tried to to impact by inviting you know safa um to come and scout talent uh but i mean with corruption and stuff that didn't go as planned uh, so I was like okay cool um, and then how I then moved from that to to e e tourism or bicycle tours um, is my brother-in-law had a bicycle tour company and he wanted me to come and market the company okay right so when I got there I saw what he was doing um, I didn't like what I was doing, so I suggested, you know, he didn't like what I was suggesting. <laughs> ah, so uh, we didn't see eye to eye. Yeah. Um, and then also, personally, I wasn't in, in a space of focus as well, okay. uh, just to be fair. Uh, so also my ideas were, were really raw. They were good, but they were not, you know, thought out properly and stuff. And I think backing them up, yes. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean? Um, and they brought the numbers, but the numbers they didn't result into money. And what he wanted was just money okay. to say, look, I'm running a business, so it needs to be a profit. You know what I mean? So that didn't happen. Um, so we didn't see eye to eye. So I was like, you know what? It's fine. Um, I'll just go do this on my own. You know what I mean? I'll just go do these crazy ideas on my own. <laughs> Eventually, the numbers <coughs> that you know of people will re will result into money. Um, and that's how Pony was born. He said, screw it. 
yeah, I said, screw that, <laughs> you know, uh, let's do it. Um, and then I had, I mean, I had no bicycles when I started, so I would, you know, charge people, mm-hmm. go rent out bikes from the other guys, come back, work, you know, done, <laughs> take pictures, keep it moving. So now you have your own bikes? Yeah, I got my own fleet of bikes. Uh, even cuts one of uh, the bicycle NGOs in South Africa to donate bikes. Uh, in Kuberga, there's these yellow and black bikes that you see in the township mostly. They are donated to schools, for kids that live about 10 kilometers away from school okay. to have transportation to come to school. So obviously with the work that I do, Group Bukiponi um, kind of aligns with what they do. <coughs> so they were like, look, um, we're gonna, we have a program called Work to Earn, I think. So I had to collect about 100 books for one bike. Okay. Yeah, so I collected enough for like um, 10 bikes. So they donated 10 bikes. But I already had my, my 10 bikes as well that I invested um, money in. Um, and then one of the professional cycling teams of South Africa, they donated helmets as well. Okay. Yeah, so. So when that happens, and I talk about, you know, this is a bit broader than what I think, you mm. know. Um, so I'm not, I'm not truly invested like in tourism. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I'm invested in bicycles and books, you know. And if I'm able to then, you know, do tourism with the bicycles, that cool. Yeah. If I'm able to impact the township or the community in a positive way through books, then that's all. So I'm really talking about impact. Eh? What kind of impact do you want Ebony? Bookie Bunny to have in your community? Um, anything positive, man. Uh, <laughs> we've had so many uh, township businesses that are not impacting the, the community in a right way. Um, I mean, look, alcohol and events is all cool. You know, we all need our social uh, vibe and stuff. But also the people that are organizing these uh, social events that include alcohol, I feel like they're not doing enough also to educate people about, you know, what they're consuming. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so I, I don't want to do, I don't want to have that kind of impact. I want to have a positive impact, yeah. you know. Um, so for me, if, if, if we can be able to, as Boogie Born, educate one child in the township, that's the kind of impact that I want to make. Beautiful. You know, whether it's through money that we make that we then share with the school fees or whatnot, or through the books that we uh, we share with the community. You know what I mean? So for me, that's the kind of impact that I want to make. Um, a positive one. Anything else? Yeah, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as Bookie Boy, you just mentioned that um, you would love to, or maybe I should ask it this way. Do you have um, a foundation that actually assists with um, putting kids in school and stuff yeah. like that? Um, so yeah, we we're just formalizing it okay. uh, because all the help that um, that we are attracting uh, needs us to formalize things. Mm-hmm. You know, so yes, we do have a book on the foundation, but it's, we're just in the process of, of formalizing everything and you know just getting. The paperwork right so it's taking long because personally i'm not a fan of paperwork um, <laughs> so, <is> yeah <laughs> so so the the help that we're getting um is just taking a bit uh longer but we're just formalizing everything but we do have a bookie pony foundation that already exists okay if yeah. someone wants to maybe um assist or donate um so so far what what i do ne, is uh, well, for the past year, uh, especially with the tourists, because we have a lot of people that come from different backgrounds that have, you know, crazy money and stuff like that. They want to share with the community. Mm-hmm. So when they want to donate, what I do, I, I take them to the community center that I work with, and then they can donate directly to, to the center and not necessarily through us mm-hmm. uh, for now. Uh, so that's, you know, we're transparent with everything. You know, I don't want five years down the line to be you know, call to the Zondo Commission or something. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I just, I do, I do it like that because already the, the, the other NGOs already uh, registered, they have accounts okay. and stuff like that. So it's always better to just do it direct. So that also if you maybe have a problem with whatever, then you can communicate with them direct. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, through my bicycle tours, what I do, I do take visitors and tourists that book through Ipokiponi to 
different uh, charity organization that we work with in the township. You know what I mean? So they get to meet the people that are there, uh, the beneficiaries. They get to see the actual uh, center that I claim to be helping. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if they need to assist them um, because of the tour, then they can do it direct, yes. you know, for now. And then, yeah, once we get our papers uh, sorted out, then if they want to donate through Pukiponi, then that would be cool as well. Like we've mentioned a lot of things. Yeah. So if, if I were to ask you, what is Pukiponi? How would you respond? Uh, <laughs> the coolest <laughs> bicycle and cycling brand in Soweto. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I used to <laughs> want to explain. I used to want to be like, ah, it's a bicycle tour. That does this, that does that. Look, it's just a, the coolest bicycle and cycling brand in Soweto. And I understand you have merch as well. Um. Yeah, we got we got uh, merch coming up. Uh, very limited. I'm joking. Uh, it's just You're a, not joking. You're not <laughs> joking. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you, but okay. <laughs> um, it, the, the, the previous one was limited, but we're just working on you know having a, something like big because also I think uh, personally, Bengis mm -hmm. um, with with the whole thing. Okay. Um, also because that's not my focus, you know. But I saw but people want to buy. You know what I mean? Um, so. So we yes, I'm working on a on a on a on a nice uh, match that represents Pukiponi. Pukiponi is really simple and straightforward. Really, there's there's nothing fancy about it. Uh, so so you think <laughs> collaborated? <laughs> I'm collaborating with with a young man from El Dorado Park. Mm -hmm. They do clothing and stuff like that. So because I always I hate being jack of all trades. Uh, so for this, I always try to partner with people that know about will this T-shirt last five years? You know, what kind of branding do I need? You know, um, I do my own mock-ups and logos and stuff like that. But taking that step further, then I need someone else to guide me. So working with a guy from from Busibi, from Eldos. Um, so hopefully near the end of this year, we can have uh, you know a whole range. Uh, also working with a different designer as well to design like proper um, cycling kits, okay. uh, but with with a with a township touch, nice. you know, and not necessarily what we've been you know custom to when it comes to proper beeps and cycling shirts. Don't say anything. So yeah. Okay. So that's what we're working on <clears throat> when it comes to match. Yeah. I love that you mentioned you're working with other people. Because I think a whole lot of us, we want to start something. You get stuck in thinking you have to fill in all the details yourself. Mm. You know, so yeah. I like that you actually reach out to other people. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm a big fan of collaboration. I'm just not a big fan of help me so that I can help you. COVID-19. Yeah. You've been very, very busy. <laughs> Found a way to keep myself busy. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So I've always had this idea of, I don't have a bicycle career company, right? Uh, I already have a bicycle tour company. Yes. I already have a bicycle advertising company where we have like a custom made billboard okay. that we put on our bikes and then we cycle and then the billboard follows. So the billboard is like quite big. Oh, so you do advertisement as well? Yeah, bike. on bikes. Oh, yeah. okay. So from now, every, I mean, I call myself the bicycle entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the right <laughs> word for it. <laughs> so, you know, the bicycle entrepreneur needs to find all these ways to make business around bicycles. Yes. So when COVID uh, came, mm -hmm. or whatever I did, it landed or whatever. Um, it's still here. <laughs> yeah. It's still here. I mean, we're on day 200, I think, of uh, lockdown. I stopped something. counting. But anyway, when, when that when that situation happened, um, I was like, you know what? I have friends who are um, cyclists. You know, we're all laser cyclists uh, because we don't race bikes. Apparently, if you don't race bikes, then you fall under the laser cyclist. I know. Um, yeah, I've, so we all heard that term before. <laughs> so we're all laser cyclists. Um, so I was like, look, you know, because I love being on the bike. I won't lie. I love being on a bike, you know. So, so when that situation happened, we we're like, "What can we do 
Mm-hmm. Then I went back. I call it like my idea shelf. Okay. So I went back. I was like, yo, dude, this is the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, what can be made? And then the bicycle career thing came. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we were on lockdown level five, I think that's where we started. Right? Yes, that's where we started. Where we couldn't go outside. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of research mm-hmm. around the bicycle career thing. Um, so I saw, okay, cool. Because I've, I've done the research before, but I didn't take it seriously because obviously the bicycle tours were keeping me busy. The bicycle advertising was keeping me busy. So I, was, I didn't pay attention to the bicycle career side. So I kind of had no choice but to pay attention. So I did my research, um, checked out what I can do, you know, how, the, what kind of bags do we need um, and stuff like that <coughs> to get started. And obviously the government made it easy and also difficult. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. they, had a, they, had a, they had that certificate that you needed to print out, uh, a permit. Oh, yes, uh, for you to move around. Yeah, for you to move around. So I was like, look, uh, we're just going to print out this thing, um, you know, and get to work, really. <laughs> print out the, the form, informed my friends. I'm like, dudes, we are now a bicycle career company. Uh, okay. I'm gonna get us parcels to deliver in the township, mm-hmm. uh, and then we're gonna get to work. Okay. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And obviously, I posted on, on social media yes. as well to say, look, you know, if you have anything that needs to be transported from point A to point B, we'll do that. Um, and then, yeah, the story caught fire. Uh, other people of influence started sharing the story. Um, and then I guess other people of other influence that are, you know, using our services. But that's how that's how the bicycle career thing came about. I was fortunate enough to have friends who, you know, agreed to do it. Um, and then we just uh, started doing it. And I think also uh, with my marketing background, mm-hmm. I was able to sell the story um, on social media in a way that people, you know, bought. They were like, oh! using the same bikes that you use for your tours but now you can't do tours because it's locked down oh that's so sweet okay <laughs> you know what i mean so we're like all right cool whatever <laughs> get us the parcel let's move them you know um and then also but the the biggest strategy that i had was the last mile delivery thing where i was like to big korea companies let us do your township deliveries okay because you guys one you don't know the township better than us yes. uh two you're scared of crime of whatever crime that you claim to be scared of crime yeah in the township mm-hmm. so and i mean we the gangsters okay we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not but we know like i mean even if my bike was to go missing today i kind of have Even an today, idea you know, yeah, you know what i mean of who took it and try and make you know ways of finding it back yeah. so that's what I, I sold to them i was like look let's save you time mm-hmm. Come, let's have a meeting point, deliver your stuff, let us take it into the township at this fee. You know, they're like, oh, cool, let's do that. So, and then we partnered with a few Korea companies, that's what we do for them, um, <coughs> even till this day. Yeah, so I didn't um, pivot, because I think that's the word that was mostly used during lockdown, that you, yeah, you pivoted from a bicycle tour to a bicycle career or whatever. <laughs> I just added another yeah, business. Expanded. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I just added another business into the whole Pokey Bonnie brand. Um, and yeah, so we've been operational since then. We're still deliver even today. Um, we wanted to partner with small businesses mm-hmm. because they're the ones that were struggling during lockdown yes. um, in terms of you know getting their products into their clients. Right, because one, they didn't know how to do it. Also, uh, I think the big Korea companies were just a bit pricey. You know what I mean? I mean, I always tell the story of this guy, Oteng um, Samakwata, and when we were allowed to, you know, sell food or buy food or whatever, um, it's 60 rand, but to get Ikotayake to your doorstep, it will cost you 100 rand extra. So it's like 160 for a quarter. A-Y. You know? Yeah, a one. So you're like, I do, I love a quarter, but not that much. I'm not going to pay 160. And I want to support. You know what I mean? And you want to support, you know? So that's when we're like, you know what? Let us, let us, you know, focus on the small businesses. The big guys, this is our proposal to them. Let us do your last mile delivery. There's nothing more to negotiate. It's either you in or you're not. Yes. It's that simple. And then focus with the small guys. Uh, have um, pricing that is makes more sense to them 
you know what I mean? And I'm in the business is based in Soweto, so yes. it's not like we're coming from there to come to you to take and go there. It's like, you all here. yeah, Orlando, Sia, Emma Pieta, Sia Tata, Sia, I'm Sepro Tia, we're done, you know what I mean? Uh, for 15 Rand, you know? So, so they were like, ah, okay. <laughs> that's that's our thing, you know? Um, and then that's when we partnered with, with everyone else. About do they really do support local um, and buy all these branded t-shirts of, of people um, and, and yeah and then uh, also the big uh, so what what we've managed to attract is actually books so we deliver a lot of books oh, across Joburg that's interesting yeah so a lot of these I don't know if I call them publishing companies they they're like yo books do you guys deliver books and like yeah, yeah we deliver books and then they you know they then give us the books whenever they get an order they just send it the, the address and then we quote invoice and then deliver the book yeah. so yeah even now there's a lady that's um she's a writer she said so she's gonna be um publishing a book and she needed a career you know services that made sense you know and fortunately that's what us um, and I mean, it's books. They're not heavy. You, know, you can take about. <laughs> so does that minutes. mean um, then you don't just concentrate on in Soweto? Do you go outside Soweto? We do job it. We cycle as far as four ways. We deliver in four ways. Um, Santin, uh, okay, Bryanston and Santin, almost the same thing. Uh, the whole of Randbeck. Um, we went as view, far as Bedford. Yeah, just depends. Uh, so a couple of bottles. So <laughs> we do we do uh, and <laughs> we do a yeah Ask no I can tell I can tell we do transport you know bottles so with the um bicycle courier company right how easy is it for you to move around I understand yes you know um you know the township because you grew up here, you were born yeah. here, you grew up here. However, how easy is it navigating the township, especially when it comes to infrastructure and stuff like that? And taxi drivers. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even the people. Nah, man. It's, 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 it's not easy. Obviously for us, uh, it's a challenge that we accept. Uh, but to be quite honest, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's a bit dangerous. I think ever since we started uh, five, six, five months ago, uh, we've had a running with uh, taxi drivers uh, almost all the time, to a point where it, it, it almost like gets borderline violent. You know what I mean? Because also we have that thing about we are road users as well. Yes. You know, uh, so taxi drivers. I mean, I think every situation has a positive and a neg- negative side. So there's those taxi drivers who are really. Uh, crappy people and there's those taxi drivers who really understand that we're also trying to make a living yes. right uh, I mean some other taxi drivers call us uh, Mr. Uber or something <laughs> right so that's pretty cool but um, navigating getting to the destination is a challenge because uh, also besides taxi drivers motorists as well um, I don't think we as South Africans understand the culture of cycling to the fullest um, I don't think uh, the people with influence and in power, I don't think they're doing enough to promote cycling, mm-hmm. whether as a mode of transport, as a mode of business, or as a sport. Yes. Right? Everyone else believes about bicycles don't belong on the road, which is you know a wrong belief. Uh, God, okay, what can we do? Yeah. We just accept the challenge um, and give thumbs up to motorists that actually understand our vulnerability on the road and give the other sign to everyone else that you know is trying to be a hard head. <laughs> So it, it is what it is, uh, but for us, it's just that the fact that we are lazy cyclists, you know, so we understand bicycles. Um, I like to call us social cyclists. Yeah, yeah, social <laughs> cyclists. You know, I think that also plays a part that we are social cyclists. So we are able. We've been social cyclists for years, so we actually understand so we're sort of driving. Um, in the township so um, and also I just think man as a cyclist doing this kind of a job you just need also confident when you're on the road 
because uh, without confidence, I mean, in anything, mm -hmm. but also with this kind of a business, if you don't have confidence, then the challenge will be very challenging. You know what I mean? I think if, 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 if we were super scared of motors, of course, we don't want to get injured or hurt or, I mean, the As worst die. Yeah. Know what you're yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I mean, other things are just logic. You know, they're just logic. Like, no, that you stop sign. <laughs> you're supposed to stop. You know what I mean? Uh, robots, my little red, you're supposed to stop. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. So, um, yeah, for us, navigating around the township is challenging, but we get the job done. Uh, we haven't had any serious um, incidents. Uh, I mean, one of my cyclists now is out. He fell on his own. I did. One for I mean, his, his hand. <laughs> yeah, ah, he'll be fine. No, Uwe, Uwe, because he knows what he was doing. That's okay. why I will. Yeah, but, <laughs> but outside that, we haven't had like serious problems and stuff like that. Um, I think also our bags, they help because they're super pink. So they're like reflecting, okay. you know, so they help with the visibility on the road. And our jackets are like lime green. So that also helps with the visibility on the road. So if anyone was to hit us or was chase, Katafun was chase. There's no way good. Bonanga. But you pick a pink and lime green. Ah, there's no way. You know, but I mean, it is what it is. And yeah, and, and I mean, I'm sure it happened uh, elsewhere. But yeah, for us, uh, it's just it's just that confidence of us could so we know the township uh, we know how to navigate and any challenge is accepted really okay and we follow the rules of the road so this is the most important <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then if um someone in the township they want to use your services how do they get a hold of you um when social media really it put people yeah and on google so you don't have an, an app yet no, Let's no, no. I, uh, no. So, I'm, st I'm still learning about the app because mm -hmm. uh, they did tell me about FET. It's 200,000 to develop an app. So, from now, I was like, I don't have 200,000 lying oh, around. Uh, Who are you talking app. to? <laughs> 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 but, yeah, that, well, they said it's pricey, uh, okay. but they did say 200,000. So, I was like, look, let me just learn. And, and you know investigate and see how it, it can benefit uh, us because uh, so far we're comfortable also with the growth because it's also a learning care for us so I don't want to launch us um, into having an app and then can't keep up with the demand yeah. you know what I mean I don't, I don't want us to be caught in that situation so so far everything is going um, accordingly uh, a steady growth we are able to uh, handle the demand yes. right um, so yeah and then in the meantime I'm learning about apps I've consulted with with a number of guys um, you know because uh, my question my question is always is okay I have an app how do I make first the money back that I put into making that app you know what I mean how does it pay for itself you know what I mean do I have to then take 100 deliveries a day for me to make you know what I mean um, so I'm just learning about those. Um, as soon as someone convinces me around that, then you know we'll move it to the next step and say, okay, cool. Uh, from here, then where do we go? You know, yeah. But for now, uh, we do have social media pages. Just Pokey Pony everywhere uh, on Google. Pokey Pony, I'm sure we appear somewhere there. Okay. You know, uh, we're gonna be launching a website. I mean, we do have uh, an e-commerce website where we sell some of the merch, but just socks. Uh, for now, cycling and running socks they can also be casual, um, and we also obviously the tours are booked through there as well, um, and and we sell bicycles. So if you are if you're looking to start your cycling journey and stuff like that, we have good quality bikes at very affordable prices. Um, they, yeah, they're not they're not second hand um, unfortunately, but they are good quality bikes. Um, and they for entry level, you know, like if, if you if you want to, you know, start start cycling for health reasons, we have the right bike. If you want to start cycling for social, we have the right bike. You know, if you want to start cycling to become a cyclist, we have, we have the right bike for you. Do you teach? Um, we're starting um, end of October. End of October, we're starting. Okay. Yeah, because we have a lot of, especially uh, women that want to learn how to, how to ride. Um, so we were starting um, to teach. I have a friend who just moved from Cape Town uh, to Joburg, uh, but it's my childhood friend. Uh, yeah, so he's he's more comfortable teaching. Okay. I'm, I'm personally 
I don't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I believing I don't, that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the patience. Um, and also, I don't know. I was never taught how to ride a bike, so I, I don't think I would know how to teach someone. Yeah. I was put on the bike. What's mm-hmm. what? You're not just deep. Um, yeah, and then I was like, the reason why my teeth are like this, because I fell and then I hit this tubu and Jenny. So I don't think I want to do that to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, so but we are uh, part of the team. We're collaborating with someone that can uh, handle that part and teach people how to cycle. Cool. Yeah. Are you hiring? <laughs> uh, the, we're still opening up. With the levels, yeah. So I, just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, not hiring, yet. but but I will be. I guess I will be hiring. It feels so weird because <laughs> I've been hiring my friends, so it's not hiring. Really. It's like, dude, just come. There's money. <laughs> so yes, we'll be hiring as soon as we can close the deal with uh, the publishing lady that wrote a book and wants the book to be distributed because we're doing um, the addresses. Okay. So we're going to be doing a lot of road report. Um, okay. So yeah, so I guess for that we'll need obviously manpower. Um, and yeah, so as soon as that deal is, is like solid, mm. then yes, I guess I'll be looking for more friends to join. So we got our yes. <laughs> <laughs> the last question. If you had a superpower, yeah. what would it be? Uh, probably to convince our government that we need bicycles. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the only thing you need. That's, if I had a superpower, honestly, <laughs> I would convince the people in power to say, look, build infrastructure, yeah. they will come. <laughs> it's that simple. Build proper infrastructure, they will come. You know, because uh, I really believe that bicycles can move this country to a you know different level. I mean, every morning um, when I'm going to drop my daughter at school, I see cyclists every morning, over 20. You know what I mean? So there, there are people that cycle to work. You know, and and I'm not I'm not talking about white people. There are people about you know, I people you that, mentioned that. that yeah yeah because people usually get confused when I say I see people they think oh ah no I belong really? no like black people cycle to work you know construction workers they go mm. to to work using bicycles gardeners they go to work using bicycles you know what I mean so maybe if the people in power can build proper infrastructure for for cycling then maybe we might see even more people uh, taking up you know a bicycle and cycling to wherever because if we have successful NGOs donating bicycles to school for kids to cycle to school, you know what I mean? Then the least that the people in power can do is accommodate that. Yeah. You know, because now it looks like, you know, you're putting all those kids in danger, you know, and, and kids are the future. We need the kids, you know, and when they're on the bicycle, they're better because then, you know, it eliminates a lot of things, obesity, there's that. You know what I mean? Then we become a healthy nation as well. Yes. You know, because that's also on the agenda to get this country to be a healthy one. But you know, we're not putting proper infrastructure to tackle those kind of um, ills. So yeah. So if I have a superpower, to convince <laughs> Dan Bucks and his company there to build proper infrastructure for cycling. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. Bumi, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. I again, any Miss Bailey. No more excuses. Screw it. Just do it. What if it works? That was Mbumile Longtinso from Boki Boy. Check out his website, Swazim Sol. And please like, share, and subscribe. See you next episode.